Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Schuberth C5 Flip Front Helmet. We've been waiting quite a long time to get our hands on this lid and I've had this fully finished production model Schuberth C5 for a month now. I've done 600 miles in it, so hopefully I can now explain all the details and also tell you how I personally got on with it. We were hoping to get this video out sooner, but I've discovered an issue with the helmet that I wanted to explore fully before putting this video out. This helmet is a really important release from Schuberth and it's equally important that we get this video right, as a lot of people have been waiting a long time to see if this helmet's actually any good. I'm sure there are some people out there who will drone on in all sorts of detail about the history behind this helmet, but here's the short version. Schuberth brought out their C4 flip-up touring helmet a few years ago, and obviously they thought it was great, but not many of us riders agreed, and Schuberth had no option really but to go back to the drawing board. This is the result, the C5. The idea is that this helmet sits above the amazingly popular C3 Pro in Schuberth's range, and this one's a bit more suited to distance touring. It's a bit roomier on the inside, it has the option of fitting higher tech communications kit and it isn't quite as obsessed with noise as the C3 Pro, which Schuberth say is the quietest lid around. Another thing this lid has that the C3 Pro doesn't, this is approved to the new ECE 2206 safety standard, which makes this the first flip front helmet to go on sale with that approval. So let's run through the key info and how I found it on the road. This size medium C5 weighs in on our scales at 1,682 grams, which is 10% more than the C3 Pro. But this helmet comes with quite a bit of the communications kit already installed, which explains at least some of that extra weight. And we're finding that helmets meeting the new safety standard are a bit heavier anyway, as that extra protection usually comes from having more helmet to protect you. The shell material is vacuum compressed fiberglass with an added band of carbon fiber, which brings a balance of strength and weight. It's got a smooth, simple shape, and I found this lid nice and stable in use. Schuberth's figures show that while it is a bit louder than their C3 Pro in a comparative environment, it's not exactly a noise monster. They say a rider who's doing 62 miles an hour on a naked bike should experience 88 decibels inside this helmet, which is three decibels more than in a C3 Pro. I've ridden two bikes in this helmet, my Yamaha FZ1 Phaser and also a Suzuki V-Strom 1050. Found the ride quieter on the Phaser, which has a shorter screen and it is a bit noisier on the V-Strom, but it's not been a problem, especially as I wear earplugs anyway. The lifting mechanism for the chin bar has had quite a lot of attention from Schuberth and there are a few serious improvements on this one over what's gone before. It still releases on one button at the bottom of the chin bar, just here, but when it gets to the top, it now rests a little more solidly into position than other Schuberths. Now you can also lock it into the raised position with this red switch on the side. This helmet is dual homologated, so it's legal to ride with the chin bar pulled up like this if you want. And this is Schuberth's first dual homologated flip front. As far as I understand it, flip front helmets now have to be dual homologated to pass the new 2206 test, but we'll see how that turns out as more flip fronts passing that new test start to appear. The chin bar also locks back down in a more reassuring way than say Schuber C3 Pro. The closing mechanism is made completely differently on this lid and it does close more solidly with a more pronounced click that really lets you know it's shut. There's more to this as well and it, this bit's really clever. If you've got the visor partially up when you lift the chin bar, the mechanism will leave it partially open when you bring the chin bar back down again. So there's quite a lot there that's quite a bit better than what's gone before. So let's move on and look at the ventilation. The C5 has two chin vents and there's both an inlet and an exhaust on the main helmet portion of the shell. This rocking shutter at the top of the chin bar, it's what Schuberth call the visor vent, scoops air in and then sends it up through the top of the chin bar and to the inside of the lid. And then the lower vent cover slides down to expose two holes that allow air to flow through to the mouth area. There's a mesh foam filter in there which traps bugs and debris without stopping the air flowing through and that mesh insert can come out for cleaning or replacement if it gets really grubby. These vents were both fantastic on my phaser. I could hear and feel a really healthy flow of air through the upper scoop and also a good amount through that bottom one. Behind the taller screen of the V-Strom, they weren't quite as effective, but I could still feel and hear air flowing through there to keep the interior of the helmet fresh. A good thing about the bottom one as well is that you can leave it partially open if you just want to let a little bit of air in rather than having the full flow. 
The vent up top slides back, and again, there are two holes leading down inside the helmet. There's a mesh in there, again, that stops bigger bugs getting through, and this shutter can be left half shut if you just want a little bit less airflow. And that vent cover, the whole thing here, can also be prized off to let you clean underneath there. So air that comes in through the top can travel through channels in the EPS impact liner, and then there are two escape routes for that air as it comes in. The first route is for it to travel between the EPS and the shell, which allows air out at the back of the neck through this mesh section on the neck roll. But there's also an exhaust vent in the back of the shell now, which helps more air escape than you got on previous shoe booths. That top vent on here is the most effective I can remember from any helmet I've worn. Loads of air flows in, and I can feel it streaming around the inside of the helmet, especially traveling down either side of my temples. So the visor on the C5, it's similar to Shuba C3 Pro, but it's better. It's deeper and it gives a better field of vision. It still has these turbulators on top, which stop wind catching on that top edge and then making a whistling noise. Changes really easily too. There are two levers that you push forward and then you rotate the visor back and it just comes off and then reverse the process and it's back on. And it feels like it's more securely attached to the helmet than the system on a C3 Pro. It lifts and lowers with twin tabs. That's one on either side. And that sort of thing can be handy in traffic as sometimes you want to be able to lift the visor with your right hand rather than your left. It has one, two, three, four, five stages as it lowers and then it lands in what she would call the city position, which leaves a bit of space around the bottom for air to flow. Then you give it a firmer push and it clicks shut. One of the big upgrades on this helmet is the pin lock. It's a Max Vision insert and it's a pin lock 120, the most protective available. Shubuth doesn't have a great record with anti-mist inserts, it has to be said, and it was one of the issues that struck the doomed C4, but they've gone for the top grade insert this time. Still though, I can't stand here and tell you with 100% confidence that fitting that superior pin lock has fixed the visor issue. I've had problems with moisture inside this helmet, which is why we delayed this video, so I could spend more time on the road to try and get to the bottom of the issue. In bad weather, I've ended up with water on the pin lock insert on the inner surface of it, which I believe is down to a massive buildup of condensation around the outside of the insert on this part of the visor here, where it's not actually covered by the pin lock. And that water, I believe, is eventually running onto the pin lock. I had some mist form between the visor and the pin lock as well, which meant riding with this visor vent open to get some air in, and opening that stopped the misting on the inside getting any worse. But it means there's the potential for water to get in through that vent and I have ended up with a sprinkling of water on the inner surface of the pin lock around the nose area. When that's happened, there's been a slight pool of water around the nose part of the lid just here, and I believe that water's been sprinkled onto the visor by air that's flowing through that vent. I've tried this helmet with two different visors, each of them with a pre-installed pin lock. The first visor was the one that was supplied with the helmet, which comes with the pin lock fitted to it anyway. And then when I had an issue with that first one, I told the UK importer about it, and they sent me a second visor, again with a new pin lock, pre-installed and the second visor did the same thing for me as the first one had done. It started to mist, I opened the visor vent, the misting didn't get any worse at that point and then after about an hour and a half of riding I had moisture inside the visor and on the inside of the pin lock. I'm not saying this would be a problem for everyone and I can only tell you my experience of it. I suffered this while riding the Suzuki V-Strom 1050, sat behind a big screen and the conditions were pretty ropey as all of my riding in this helmet was either done in late December or early January. So it was very challenging weather. If you go on and buy a C5, I hope it's different for you and that you can come back here and make a comment to say, mate, what the hell are you on about? For me, it's a shame as I can genuinely be complimentary about pretty much everything else on or in the C5. So let's move on. As well as that main visor, there's also a sun visor. It operates on this side-mounted switch, which Shubus used in the past, and it offers plenty of depth. But if you want less depth, which you might want, for example, if the visor touches your nose when it drops, then Shubus have come up with an innovation for that. There's a limiter that slides across and it blocks the last five millimeters of travel, which gives you a shorter reach for the sun visor. Like other Shubas, that sun visor isn't anti-mist coated. Shubas are more concerned with optical quality of their visors and they don't want an anti-fog coating because they say it will get in the way of that optical clarity. So let's move on to the interior. As usual for Shubas, a lot of thought has gone into this. A lining is made up of seven parts, which brings in loads of options when it comes to custom fitting. There are two cheek pads, two temple pads. There's a top pad, a front pad, and a back pad. All of those are available as optional upgrades in a range of thicknesses, which helps you make the fit perfect for you. And because there are so many parts, Shuba say that means this lid can be tuned not just to suit different head sizes, but also different head shapes. 
The cat's ears from the C3 Pro are back too. Folding these out puts a block over the air inlets for a warmer ride in winter, making absolutely sure no air can get through. And then if you fold them back, you can get an uninterrupted flow of air in the summer. That lining is made using a fabric called Interpower, which helps small amounts of air circulate by the skin, stopping moisture building up. In my 600 miles with this helmet, I found the lining nice and comfy. It's not as plush perhaps as a C3 Pro, which has a more velour type finish, but it's still very supportive and comfortable. As for the head shape, I was lucky and this size medium fitted me straight away and I didn't need to fit any new pads to try and tune it. My head is as broad as it is long, it's what's known as a round head shape and this helmet suited that quite nicely. I'm probably stating the obvious when I say the lining's fully removable, it'd be hard to replace a lining if it wasn't fully removable, but it is a bit of a fiddle to take it out and put it back in. It's got twice as many parts as a normal helmet liner and it takes about twice as long to remove it and refit it. Thankfully, that's not something you need to do too often. And once you've worked out where everything goes, it is pretty easy to do. It's just a little bit fiddly and a bit time consuming. The final thing to talk about with the liner is the strap fastener. It's a micrometric buckle, which I'm sure it's exactly as you would expect with the flip front helmet. Shoebirth's anti-roll-off system is there too. So two straps go from the chin strap to these rivets at the back of the shell. They give extra security, those straps, that the lid won't roll forward and come off your head in an accident. It's a bit easier to fit the helmet lining around these straps on this helmet than it is on previous Shoebirths, and the straps are now fixed to the buckle itself. So there's absolutely no chance of leaving them disconnected when you refit the lining, which is something I can't say about Shoebirths C3 Pro, for example. Another nice bit about Shoebirths that they've kept with this helmet, this chin cover does up with Velcro before you fasten the strap over the top, which makes it easier and more comfy than it is on most helmets. So normally at this point, I'd show you if there are recesses where intercom speakers fit. Well, in the C5, there aren't just recesses, you get speakers in there too. The C5 comes with half of an intercom already in it. As well as the speakers, there's the antenna for the comms and FM radio that are pre-installed. All you need to do is add the control module, battery and microphone, and you're off and running. The official integrated intercom for this helmet isn't available as we record this, so unfortunately I can't tell you how well it works. It's going to be a high-tech solution that's the equivalent to Senna's 50S. So it'll have mesh capability to let you communicate with big groups of riders. Price will be up there to match that tech spec and it'll be about £350 for that unit. So let's talk about sizing and approvals. The Shuba C5 comes in sizes from extra small up to triple extra large. There are two shell sizes. The smaller of those two shells covers every helmet size up to and including large. And then the bigger shell covers all of the sizes of extra large and above. As for approvals, as I said earlier, this meets the new ECE 2206 helmet standard and it's the first flip front to do that. That new test involves quite a few important changes over the outgoing 2205 standard, and I think it makes this helmet quite a step up from current Shoebirths in that regard. The new standard involves more impacts than the old one, including some harder hits and also some glancing blows. Some of those elements have already been in the sharp tests, which have been carried out in this country for over 14 years. I suspect the fact this helmet meets the new standard means this will score quite highly in sharp, but we'll have to wait for them to test it to be sure about that. So there are a lot of people waiting to find out if this helmet's any good. I think on the whole, it's actually very, very good. It's clearly still a Shoebirth and has a lot of their best traits. It's aerodynamically stable, it's not noisy, build quality is really classy, and it feels as though everything's been thought through properly. On top of that, it feels safer than previous Shoebirths, and the ability to legally ride with the gym bar locked up is a definite plus point. There is, in my experience, the visor misting problem that I experienced, which I told you about earlier. So I can't confidently say Shoebirth have got that 100% right. We'll have to see what the wider experience of this helmet is and when more and more people have had the chance to have their say having bought one. In my opinion, other than that issue, the C5 is a proper top grade flip front helmet. The price is about right for a top spec flip. It's launching at 500 pounds in plain colors like this and 600 pounds for a graphic. That puts it on a par with Shoei's Neotech 2, which is clearly its main contender for the title of top flip front helmet. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the new Shoebirth C5 helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.